What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. And before we get started, I want to tell you this, right? I've never met you. I don't, I don't know anything about you, but I do know this one thing. You have greatness within you. All you have to do is go out there and find it. And in order to find it, you just got to get obsessed. Get obsessed about whatever it is you want to, not, not what you want to do, but what you want to accomplish. Like what is it? What is life like on the other side of that thing? If you get obsessed about that and then you, you go and you take the, the steps to get there, then you'll get there. Team, in the last video, one thing that I was, I was, I said that I wanted to make more videos, giving you guys more updates, telling you what's going on, uh, and basically walk you along this 365 day coding challenge and walk you along the challenge of building a full scale web application from, from the ground up. So front end, back end, APIs, all of this stuff. And so I'm, I'm going through this, this journey and it's been interesting so far. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about a, a lot of different packages. Um, I've actually had to go out and discover some things about some packages on my own because the tutorial I'm following some of the stuff is not out of date, but it's a little different than the, and maybe, maybe I've done some things wrong or whatever, but now I'm back on track. But, um, but yeah, it's just been, it's, 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 it's been a journey. It's been a journey. It's been a trip. Uh, and so what I was doing is I was about to sit down at the computer and I was about to do a quick introduction to PowerShell as a part of the larger course that, I, that I'm putting together. And what I do is I, I, I go from beginning. I assume that, that the people who are going to take this course, they know absolutely nothing about web development or software development or, or even websites or anything. And so we start from knowing nothing and go all the way up to building to being able to build like a full a full application. Now, one of the, the one of the reasons why why I thought I should sit down and record this is because when I was thinking about recording the PowerShell uh, tutorial, I was thinking about what about people on Mac, and then it led me to think about uh, developers in general. So PowerShell is 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 probably the most advanced terminal around, and I I say that because it was developed by Microsoft for Windows. But then Microsoft ported it to, uh, to to Mac and Linux. So now you have this one shell, this one terminal that you can download and you can use it in all these different environments. And that means that you can take your PowerShell scripts between environments. So you could use your PowerShell scripts on Windows, Mac or Linux, which is fantastic because if you're running like a if you're any kind that means that any kind of web server you you have any kind of back-end logic that you've done using powershell then you can use it on those other systems but but what made me want to want to record this video is because i was thinking about like man like mac and windows is different mac windows and linux these are all different things and we've all known that in the past, you install something on Windows, it works on Windows, and you can't install it on a Mac machine. You can't install it on a Linux machine, and the vice versa. You got something on Linux, you can't put it on Windows. And that's because of, of the file systems and the file formats and the system pass and all this stuff. And then I was thinking, like, well, you got PowerShell, and you can put PowerShell in all these different places. And it's because of programmers. Like, some programmer somewhere sat down and he thought, well, first you had Jeffrey Snover who thought up PowerShell in the first place because he wanted a way for us to be able to administer Windows systems the same way that Linux administrators had been doing it since the beginning of computing, all, all the way back to, to the mainframe days when, when things ran on Linux. And so he came up with this, he came up with this system that, that Microsoft would eventually incorporate into Windows and now you can use PowerShell to control just about everything imaginable on a Windows machine. It's, it's amazing. It's powerful. Like I was, when I was at Microsoft, the stuff that PowerShell was doing would just blow my mind. Like we would deploy code to hundreds, thousands of servers using PowerShell. And of course the PowerShell would trigger like, um, it would trigger like some C-sharp applications at some point along the way and those applications would take over and do some things and then they would call PowerShell to do some things. So you had like this symbiotic relationship between these two things. But let's get back to the developer. Somebody was so so somebody created PowerShell and then somebody else was like, okay, we want to use this on these different systems. So how how are we going to make this work? And somebody has to somebody had to think out, okay, this is the directory we're going to store this information in. This is going to be the standard. Um, and then we're, we're going to add this 
uh, the executable to the system path. So when somebody, so when somebody types this in somewhere on the system, like it'll open up PowerShell and, and this, that, and the third. And what's super cool is on a Windows machine, once you have power, after you after you've installed PowerShell, if you install Visual Studio Code. You can reach Visual Studio Code from anywhere on the system. Now, I don't know if this is the same on Mac systems now. When I had a Mac and I was using PowerShell, I would I could open PowerShell and I could just type code and Visual Studio Code would open and I could just start coding. Um, but somebody thought that through. Somebody at Microsoft thought, OK, all right. If we're going to do this on a Windows system where you can be in PowerShell and you can and you can type code and Visual Studio Code will open and you can just start working on your project, then we want that same functionality on a Mac and we want that same functionality on a Linux. And they thought this through and they thought about what would have to happen when when the user installed this program and that program and and how these things needed to talk together. And then they worked out the logic to make it all happen, which means like if you're on Mac, it's completely different. Like you have to you the the, the path. The, the way to modify the path is different. The way to, to the way to move files around and move folders around is different. But somebody thought that through. And then you take that knowledge and you put PowerShell on top of it. And now you have the ability to go from one machine to another machine using the same commands. And I just thought that was powerful because it is um, like when you think about it like that, like there is somebody behind every line of code. There is a person somewhere who thought up how this function is going to behave, how this, when we type this in here, is going to result in this in the browser. And for me, it's, it's just it's just an amazing thing that like somebody can have an idea and and out of nowhere, you can create it. And then this idea can be used by people all around the world, all different walks of life, people who speak different languages, live in different countries, people. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It does. It doesn't matter, right? Like code doesn't discriminate as long as long as you have the ability to get your code onto a computer. Like it's game over. Like you can. It's it's, it's just amazing. Um, and so and, and with me saying that, this reminds me of a story of a of a guy. He was he didn't have a computer. He wanted. He, and, and, and I, I wish I remember where I saw this at, but he didn't have a computer and he wanted to learn the code. He's some Indian guy. He's in India. And he was writing his programs in a notebook like he would just write the code in a notebook. So he has like a book or something that he got somewhere and he learns and he's like, OK, I want an application. And then he's writing in a notebook, writing a notebook. And then when he got to a computer, he took his code from the notebook, put it in a computer, boom, had an application. Um, so that just tells you that, like, there is no there is no boundary. There is no limit. That's what's so that's what's so cool about code. And and another thing that's really cool about code is is that um it's like I'll, I'll be thinking like i'll come here and i'll sit down at the computer and i'll be working and i'll do all this stuff and then when i'm done i turn the computer off and you can't see any of the work that's that that's been done like it's not like building a house or or making clothing or or anything like that like it's it's not it's not tangible like you can't you can't see it like you could say some i've been working here for 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 30 hours and but there's no how can anybody tell Unless they go look at the digital stuff that you've created, uh, so this is this super super duper interesting. So anyway, so so yeah, I was about to record this uh, uh, two videos actually, uh, one on um, on PowerShell, like an introduction to PowerShell, how to navigate around in PowerShell, and then another one on like the basic structure of HTML, and then um, I think there's going to be like a little bit of Git in there. So so um, so yeah, that's what's going on. So. I'm, I'm working on I'm working on the 365 day coding challenge. I've been coding every single day and then I'm working on the this this seven part like it, I don't know how many hours this thing is. It's taking me two weeks and I've all I've gotten done is the login page, which doesn't sound like a lot that we, if we get back to code. But when you think about it, like you got a page, you open the page, you can type in a username and password, click a button and then that fires off like the the data that's put in the field is validated on the front end so it's checked to make sure it's the email address and the password meets certain criteria then it's packaged up as a json object and is sent to the server where uh you hit the api the server says okay what kind of information do you have for me 
and the front end, the client side says, here, this is what I got. And the server says, okay, let me validate it. The server validates. If it doesn't make any sense, the server sends back an error. But if, if everything is legit, then the server takes in that information, writes it to the database, and then responds to the user saying your account's been created. And also, if the account already exists, then you'll get a response where it says that the that email address is already in use. So that's one functionality that's that's done. And then everything after that should be should be fairly simple from I mean, just, you know, from what I can imagine, uh, I would guess logging in and validating would be the hard part. And then after that, you just have to know after depending on the person's status logged in or logged out, then that would determine what they can see on the other side and then all the other modules are pretty much the same they just have different back-end logic and functionality some of them some of them delete stuff from the database some of them write stuff to the database um and that's 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 pretty much it but all right team so we've been here for about 11 minutes it's time to get off and time to get to work if you guys are interested in the intro to powershell course uh then you want to head over to codemarketsell.com and you'll find the intro to PowerShell course and then I'm adding more courses all the time so there'll be new courses there and also uh, the ultimate courses there and now until the end of the year I've got a huge discount so if you want to sign up for that you'll have lifetime access to to everything that's going to be in that course and then all the additional content that I'll be making here now and, and well into the future so you'll have access to everything for life if you guys are interested in that. So until next time, team, that's what I got going on here, man, is just code, 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 ideas and code. And uh, I just wanted to share with you guys what was going on, share with you my thoughts and in, in, in my fascination with software and software development and a little bit of information about PowerShell and the power of PowerShell. And of course, if you go into the course, you'll see just how powerful, how powerful PowerShell can be. But again, team, uh, it is me, the real Casadero, your biggest fan. And like I said before, you got greatness within you. Everybody has greatness within them. You just have to figure out what it is. And one way to do that is to figure out what you're obsessed with and just, and just run with the team. Oh, and also subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification down in the thing so you get notified whenever I post new videos. And I'll do my best to give you a boost, a burst of inspiration every time I come on. But I'll see you guys next time, team. Time to get to work.